it was me. <laughs> right, folks, uh, afternoon. Uh, we're just a, a couple of minutes away from our next session now. So if you are passing by, you've not catch, uh, managed to catch a dem so far, come and grab a seat, grab a drink, come and grab a seat, and uh, we'll be starting in a minute or two with, uh, with Simon. So now then, as you all know, because we're all involved in hospitality, one way or another, this is the time of year we all get together and make promises that we'll keep in touch and make more of an effort to, <coughs> to stay in touch with each other, isn't it, Dawn? Everybody's kissing and hugging and making those promises. Uh, and I say that because I'm just really pleased to be have Simon up here because he's uh, been around the northern food circuit as nearly as, probably as long as I have. So um, it's... Not, it's not, not quite that long. <laughs> <laughs> not quite that long. Not quite that, okay. <laughs> but uh, we always really appreciate chefs giving up the time and, and coming to do this. So uh, can we have a nice round of applause for Simon, please? Okay, sir. Okay, okay thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nice to see such a good turnout and also see some familiar faces. Uh, always settles you. Uh, as I haven't been doing any real work for about two and a half months, I might, you know, I think Brian said to me, do you remember what to do? I said, I think so, I think so. So, um, some of you will be aware, um, maybe some of you won't be, but we are making that short journey from the Pennines and the wonderful time that we've had in Rippenden over the last 10 years um, to Manchester. Uh, we, uh, after quite a, a task to find the right building we eventually did um, so we're very very happy with uh, the site that we've got and also with the team that are working together and it really is a team effort you know I I've thought about this uh, in fact I thought about it quite a lot since El Gato Negro finished and you know we started to think about the new operation and I I honest and this is being honest I don't think that I would be able to do what we're doing without the people that are involved. And it's very interesting because Will Becker yesterday was saying about teamwork and to make something, uh, and I've been cooking for 35 years and I've been I had t uh, El Gato Negro for 10 years, but the, the size and the enormity of what we're about to do is incredible. Um, and so also working with some amazing people, great design team, uh, very focused on what we want to do. It's really exciting. And I'm uh, really, really looking forward to it. So, uh, in terms of what we're going to do today, I, interestingly enough, I think El Gato Negro Manchester will be a combination of some of the stuff that we've done in the past, very much want to hold on to the heritage of what we've done, and then through different pieces of equipment, we'll look to do some new dishes as well. But the two dishes I'm going to do today are, at one time or another, have been on the menu at El Gato Negro. Uh, one is a, a take on, on breakfast, so it's chorizo, mothia, uh, little shemeji mushrooms, some migas breadcrumbs. Migas breadcrumbs I first came across about three or four years ago. And it's bread, uh, quite rustic. You leave the bread quite rustic. And it's cooked with chorizo and garlic. And it just makes for this beautiful. So that's essentially the bit of fry, the, the bread, the, the texture. Um, so what 
what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do put the first the, the bits elements of the dish are going now. So I'm going to put the first dish together, um, and then we'll start the second dish. The second dish is charil squid, um, and the, the the great thing about the squid is squids are really funny. Uh, product to deal with. I often have had amazing successes with squid and nightmare as well. Uh, so what, what I started to do, I mean we buy day boat squid so it literally comes off the boat that day and it gets distributed um, and so it's not dredged, it, it's, it's, it's line course as well which makes a huge difference. So um, we, we char reel the squid and that's served with a parsley, red onion and tomato salad. Okay? Right. And um, interestingly enough, something Michael was saying earlier, which I, I, I totally agreed with when he said it, that ingredients are the key thing. Uh, certainly for me, any dish starts with ingredients. And so I'll work with the ingredients first and then think about the dish afterwards. So it's very important that we, um, we get great Spanish products. We're very lucky, uh, you know, uh, Brindisa, from London really led the way with Spanish products and are you know, uh, very uh, helpful in making sure that we get exactly what we need. And that helps massively. And, and, and you know, what's fantastic about Spanish cuisine is it's growing constantly all the time. There's more and more influences coming from Spain and more and more Spanish restaurants. So it's, it's been nice to have been at the beginning of that journey 10 years ago and now you know, where it is today is a completely different thing so okay so we've got the mothia the chorizo some pancetta uh, we're going to fry some of the little shimeji mushrooms and we're going to do a, a, a little fried quail's egg as well so, and just the uh, this is the so the the tomato bit of the, the dish is made in, in a sauce form so it's a product called frittata Fresh tomatoes, shallots, uh, sherry vinegar, and then it's made into a, it's blitzed to a, a sauce. So that's the tomato element of it. Okay, a little bit of oil. While you're cooking there, I remember years ago that you put an incredible amount of effort into sourcing ingredients and yeah. crockery and all sorts of stuff yeah. just by, you know, constantly going over to Spain and researching. Yeah. I. I got into Spanish food probably about uh, 15, 16 years ago and one of the most invaluable things I did was I started to travel and learn and understand a little bit about different areas and regions. I mean I'm very, I went to San Sebastian 15, 16 years ago when really a lot of people weren't going to northern Spain or you know certainly not to San Sebastian and interestingly enough how that's the amount of people that are going now. And that was a, a huge eye-opener. It was really, um, it really changed my ideas. And I stood in one restaurant uh, in San Sebastian before I even ever thought about opening a tapas bar. And it was that moment, that was a defining moment uh, why I wanted to do El Gato Negro. Uh, and that's how it, that's how it. But yeah, so, sorry, to go back to your question. It's, 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 it's really important and I think it's uh, more so for the, the resources of getting what you want, but also the inspiration. A lot of my inspiration comes from traveling around Spain. Uh, it really does, it, it's, the, it's the most important thing. I think and for, for me, it's actually, you know, I think sometimes the thought of uh, the, how much it's gonna cost you puts it off, but I mean, I was regularly going to Barcelona and, and going, flying to Barcelona, staying in Barcelona for less than I probably could have gone to London for, yeah. And, and food in general is you know, sort of, I'd say slightly cheaper, you know, yeah, than, than, than London or the great restaurants in London. So.
for almost seconds that you took those for, really. Yeah. So while Chef's cooking, you might have noticed that, that uh, Adam has just slipped slid onto stage and then sat there precariously by himself just to explain obviously um, we, we're all involved in hospitality and the chef's table there is raising money for hospitality action which is our industry charity so everybody that comes and eats at the chef's table is just making a contribution to uh, to our own industry charity so and um, raising money for fellow professionals that might be in difficulty and all the chefs have signed jackets chef's jackets this year which are going to be auctioned off at the end of the show or in the next you know certainly in the not too distant future So what's what's the bacon element here then? So the uh, so the, the tomato for the tomato, yeah. the chorizo for the sausage, the mortilla for the black pudding, yeah. the pancetta, um, the, the mushrooms. I can't wait to see what you're going to do for HP sauce. <laughs> yeah. That comes in a sachet. <laughs> I tell you a funny story about HP sauce. I, the first time I ever went to Barcelona, uh, when I was a lot younger and a lot uh, more naive and a lot less educated about food, I went to a hotel and it was a nice hotel and I had a breakfast the next day and I said to the gentleman who was serving me, uh, have you got any brown sauce? He went, yes sir, no problem. So this was in Barcelona. So he came back and it was Worcester sauce. So the next time I went, I took my own. I took some sachets of brown sauce with me. Proper Englishman taking it, tea you bags. Know, you know, chefs often get asked about their favorite ingredients and um, brown sauce is actually one of my favorite ingredients. Simon, little question, what were the name of the mushrooms again? Shimeji. So again, I think Michael uh, used those this morning. Um, and b believe it or not, they, they, they look like they should be Japanese or something like that, but uh, uh, obviously from the name, but they're predominantly grown locally. So appreciate it's difficult, you can't quite see into the bowls because of the camera angle, but uh, we will try and uh, tilt one. So that's, uh, and, and the dish is just simply called desayuno, is uh, breakfast, uh, and uh, it's an interpretation of that. Okay, nice so that's the first yeah. dish. This is where, I mean, you, you want to take, take give one to Adam. Right. I don't know if you can get that on the camera. This is where <coughs> it all topples over. Yeah, it falls over. But we'll, we'll leave one on the side anyway, seeing yeah. as you've done two portions okay. just to, yeah. to show. And we'll let Adam just have a little taste. He's mastering this now. There we go.
<laughs> so you still got it? Still got it. You not lost it? I, actually, I'll, I'll let you into a little secret. Last time I uh, did this demonstration, Brian and I had, had had a very late night out, and um, I said never ever again. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done to concentrate, cook, talk, and, and deal with a hangover. So uh, I had a, a very early night last night, and so I'm on good form. Okay, so the second dish um, we're going to do is the, the squid. And again, you know, I was talking about squid. Squid can be very difficult. You know, it's either amazing or, you, you know, I'm sure you've all had an experience where, you know, you get squid and it's totally rubbery. So we started experimenting with squid a lot because you never know until you actually cook it. There's no way of telling that or other than to buy really good quality. And I find the dredged, uh, when I've used dredged squid in the past, it tends to be very problematical. So we only buy day boat squid. And what, what I've done with the squid is I marinated it in olive oil and garlic for 24 hours, uh, uh, put it in a sous vide bag, in a, in a vacuum pack bag, and water bath the squid for four minutes at 60 degrees. And that tends to work really, really, I found that works really well. It's, it's, it's absolutely right. It just tenderizes the squid slightly. And, and, and actually, another way of tenderizing squid and, and, uh, and is, is to free, or octo same with octopus. We, uh, we used to have a lot of problems with octopus when we wanted to do it. And then somebody said to me, freeze it. You freeze it and it breaks down all the enzymes in, 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 the, in the octopus and squid. So ever since we've been water bathing it, it seems to have worked really well. just give that and, and, and this is going forward and you know talking about uh, different pieces of equipment that we're going to be working with um, we really I want to part of the, the menu and, and something we've never done before is a is a whole section on grill gr you know charcoal grilling so we've done a lot of dishes over the years and I often used to think that would be amazing if it was cooked on charcoal so we're gonna have a whole section on the menu that's cooked on the charcoal grill and this will be one of them so you know we're trying to get an effect today of, of charcoal grilling but it's never quite the same because the taste that you get from the coal is is something quite unique I think but this dish would be beautiful if it was if it was done properly on the grill on, on a on a, a Josper or a, an Inca obviously yeah Sponsors, yeah yeah yeah, 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 no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, let's not forget the Inca um, it was terminology Yeah, yeah. Right. Me, me, uh, me, me, me cost price thing has just gone out the window. <laughs> okay, so. So while you're cooking that, Adam's had a, a little taste there, and uh, perhaps you were just saying that you lived in Spain. I certainly timed it right. Um, it was a lovely late breakfast. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah. But interesting combination mm. of flavours, I think, as well. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, San Sebastian, everything's happening there these days. Yeah. And like you say, 10, 15 years ago, that it wasn't, it wasn't the case. Why do you think that part of northern Spain has um, taken off? I think, I think, to be honest with you, it's been, um, it's been, an undis it's been a undiscovered, really. And uh, I think you, if you spoke to anybody that went there or goes there, or sorry, who has been there, everybody will tell you, I, 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 and a good example of this, I, I had some customers in the restaurant and they were asking me about where, where could they go. In. They wanted to go, as, there were six of them, they wanted to go somewhere where they could eat great food and, you know, have a, have a really good time. So I said San Sebastian. He went to me, where? I said San Sebastian's northern Spain. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I said, give it a try. Give it a try. Uh, consequently, they've since been... Uh, another two times they enjoyed it so much they were absolutely bowled over by it and it because and it's quite interesting uh, when you think about Manchester as a city how Manchester's developing and there's a lot of restaurants but I've never seen such uh, a demographic of restaurants as San Sebastian there's one after another after another and they all thrive um, so I think that's interesting for me because you bring that back into a city and, and, and you know I've been asked several times you know what do you think about iberica opening 
Uh, I think it's fantastic. I think the more people that start to understand Spanish food, uh, I think it's better for all of us. So I think it's a good thing. I didn't really ever think that culture of tapas and pinchos could work in, in the UK in terms of the fantastic array that you get in the bars in uh, San Sebastian. Uh, you know, so it's funny because I've had this conversation so many times. I mean, it's something I would have loved to have done. Um, I think there's potentially one or two restaurants doing it in London, but I, I don't know how you'd manage it. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a real degree of honesty, and I'm not saying we're dishonest as a, as a nation, but it's just nobody would i've been in so many tapas bars where nobody would ever dream of doing anything other than paying for the food they've had and i just don't know if we've got that culture i'd love to see that because i think it's very it's a it's, it's a gap in the market that nobody's really filled so um whether it will come or not I, as i say i think i've got a feeling there's a couple of places in london that do it but um i don't know i don't know whether it will catch on i think i think it's must be quite difficult to manage, you know, yeah. So the squid's nearly cooked. Um, it doesn't take long because it's been water bath, but what I, what I am trying to do is make sure that it's warm through more than anything. But also I want to get that really nice, more so on, on the second one, really nice caramelization. It's, it's quite important that you uh, have a, I, I, like, I like the charred, flavour of, of, of squid. I think it works extremely well. All I can say is it looks lovely. Mm. I know you can't see it, but... Uh... Right, so, you said you kind of... Uh, it's sort of a, a bit of half-time at the moment for El Gato Negro or whatever, but yeah. you talked about this site. Are we allowed to know where it is? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah it's um, on King Street. Right. It's 52 King Street. So it's directly opposite the big Jack, lovely Jack Wills building. And, you know, we were, it, you know, again, we, 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 we struggled at first to find the site that we wanted that was right for us. And we looked at various other sites and, you know, I'm not just saying this because we've got this site, but I truly feel of all the sites that we looked at, it's got the right feel for El Gata Negro. Um, it's, it, it's got elements in there that, you know, we won't really do a lot to. Um, it's got some, you know, some very natural, like the floor's fantastic, the walls are fantastic. I think other places that we were looking at, um, there was quite a lot to do, but this has got some really nice natural features. I like the, I like the fact that it's long and narrow and, you know, we've got, I don't want to give too much away because we don't want to spoil the element of surprise, but the scheme uh, that we're working on is just, for me, it's something that I've not seen here before. And I think if we, if everything goes the way we want it to, we'll have a really wonderful uh, building to operate El Gato Negro from. So. Okay. So I've got to work relatively quickly with this now because I just don't want this to go cold. So, the this is. Uh, the sort of dish really that, you know, coming into spring, um, it's really light, it's quite light. Uh, so the parsley, the red onion, and the cherry tomato. I could have, uh, could have done with a box to stand on, you know. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite, it's quite awkward. I feel like I'm... Do you want a bunk up, chef? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. So... In here, it's just some cherry tomatoes, beautiful vine cherry tomatoes, uh, the parsley, and then the red onion has been steeped in um, Forum, a vinegar called Forum, Forum is the brand, and it's Cabernet Sauvignon, it's all the residue from the wine, so it's got beautiful sweetness as well. Okay, so then I'm just going to finish with some saffron aioli.
also you, normally you can tell when you cut in this whether it's going to be right or not and it feels So other things that might change it, the menu changing at all in terms of size, you've got a grill section on now you said, but uh, would it, some of the old favourite dishes still be on there and that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, I think, I think for me it's really important that we keep um, a heritage of some of the stuff we were doing before because over a period of 10 years, you know, you do get signature, you know, people do come to like signature dishes. and. But I also want to uh, make sure that we've got enough uh, interesting new dishes as well. So I think it will be a balance of the two. And then we're just going to finish the dish with a little bit of balsamic, eight-year-old balsamic, so uh, nice and viscous, and a little bit of parsley oil as well. There we go. And then just a little bit of fresh lime to just to give it a real kick. Looks brilliant. It's really nice. Okay, folks. So we're going to let um, let Adam dig in there. It's, you can take photographs of both dishes there as well. It's uh, the breakfast type dish is still there as well. So we'll look forward to uh, to you opening in due course in King Street. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I believe uh, we can still be followed on the. All the same details, is it, Joe? Yeah. So you can still follow us on Facebook and uh, on Twitter and uh, s sign up to the... We have a newsletter as well, by the way. So if you go onto the website, you've got the ability to sign up to the newsletter and it will just keep you informed with what we're doing. All right. We'll keep you busy, okay. Chef. Yeah. Thanks. Can so, we have you. a round of applause for Simon, please? Thank you very much. For giving up his time and coming to do that today.